What's up guys, welcome back to Viewer Castles. Um, today we're going to start out with Gotha, castle level 15. So I will jump into it on my knight. <clears throat> and we'll see where he's at. Alright. So Pete Poundmore, that's fine. And then you had the... Uh, the Enrager Puppeteer. The Enrager Puppeteer is kind of weird right now. Like, the AI is really... It's either buggy or it's just not well implemented. And I've explained it in a couple other videos, but I'll do it again here. So basically, if I hadn't killed this Snotter, like, immediately, and even sometimes after you kill the Snotter, it still enrages the first thing that's closest to the hero. It almost doesn't matter if it's a corpse. So if your Pete Palmore, like, gets close enough to the hero, it'll get enraged. If it stands close enough to the uh, Snotter or Dead Snotter, it'll still get enraged. Um, but a lot of people have been switching over to bad dogs just because it's kind of buggy. As long as you have your setup where it's working well for you, I think it's fine. Although the enrage with the over the head smash isn't quite as effective as the one with the, you know, three fist combo. Just for like raw damage output purposes. Alright, so a couple archers. I kind of like this. Um, the bad dog here is a little bit more weird than previously just because the bad dog is going to run in front of the archers and the archers are really the thing you want the attack speed on. Um, but I don't mind this too much. You have the Cyclops coming down, pushing you and giving in in a little bit once your Cyclops is rank 4 it'll have a stun on it as well and then it'll force those archer shots to hit. So that's fine I think. As long as you time it out well so that your archers are around the corner lining up the shots right as you're getting stunned. And you can do that by, you know, switching around uh, the placement of your Cyclops, placement of your archers, turning them, stuff like that. This is a good uh, time waster. Ooh, and eventual, eventually we'll kill this thing. Alright. Okay, so this one's kind of weird. Like, the springboard trap is kind of weird here. It's pretty difficult to make this work in this room specifically, and the way that you had it kind of positioned, you had your Scorpio over here, so as I'm entering into this, even if I were to aggro a group right here, this pole is going to be blocking your vision, so there's almost never a situation where you're going to have this Scorpio pulling you onto the springboard trap. You almost have to just kind of hope someone walks on top of it, really. Um, you can, if, you, if you're able to, with the positioning of this guy, move him over here, it's a little bit better, but even still, I mean, you're, be, you're able to see this springboard trap pretty early on. I don't really like this room for springboard traps. I was trying to use it um, a couple days ago, and it just wasn't working well for me at all, just because of how, like, these pillars are. Alright, so this is a better place for uh, Enrager here. Um, if I hadn't, like, two-shot the minion... Um, the Pete Palmer is going to be closest to me, so that's okay, and that's only because you don't have a spotter minion, which I think is fine. Um, me personally, I prefer having a Defenditron with a Jimbo instead of a instead of a um, Hungerbot. That's, I guess, a personal preference, but I like it a bit better. Just because Jimbo goes down pretty quickly, if he gets DPS down straight away. But if you force, you know, knights to use on use their mana and their skills on the Defenditron, then it's a bit better. I like this. This is good. Um, although you're kind of, I mean, I see sort of what you're trying to do, and it might work for you. Um, I liked the initial part where you have. Your Cyclops is pushing you back over the hamster wheel, taking an extra amount of damage or, you know, forcing them to hit the uh, mouse mouse wheel multiple times. And then you have this hook. What I'm guessing what your purpose is, is you hook them to here, and then the Cyclops can push you farther and into the boss room. Which I guess is an okay concept. I'm not sure how, how practical it'll actually be, though. And I don't know if you need two hunger bots either. You might be able to switch that out for something a little bit more damage dealing. I think I can just take these on now. So yeah, and the boss room is fine as well. Um, I've seen other people using it. Basically, any three elites like this is pretty good for a boss room. And you can obviously 
change it up a little bit by adding some support units and stuff like that. Um, but I think that's fine. You have the opportunity of pulling someone in and then having the Zeke shotgun them down and all that sort of thing. So that's pretty good. Alright, so we'll jump into number two in just a second. Alright, for number two we have Geckoing, Geikoing, um, castle level 23, so I'll jump into it on my archer. And his shields are not down, so if I do get the opportunity to loot him, I'm going to do it in name of the 1 billion gold challenge. <laughs> I want the, I want the uh, corrosive traps. I don't care much about the boss, but the corrosive traps sound fun. Alright, so you had a random stab assassin. It doesn't look like it was linked to anything, unless it's a really long pull. Alright, I sort of like that. If I hadn't rolled and just kind of walked towards it, I think that would have hit. My only... Um, I guess the only thing I'm scared about is that maybe with a knight, if he just constantly is walking towards it, maybe your angles aren't quite set up correctly to actually make that Cyclops hit, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm going to drop a volley because I can. And again, this is a good one. This is much better with angles. Like, you have your Cyclops here, and that's actually going to be almost out of vision. I think you'll be able to see it a little bit, but either way, it's going to be hard to dodge, so that's good. Oh, that was kind of neat. He charged into the... into the, uh... What do you call it? The ability there. Um, overall, I think this is an okay time, time waster, but the Cyclops is kind of weird. I think maybe the Cyclops being a little bit closer, although I do have, like, a crazy DPS. Um, yeah, I think it's okay. <clears throat> and that is obviously a pretty standard kill zone, so... I think that's fine. Alright, this one's a little bit more weird. I'm not sure exactly where the Cyclops was placed, uh, but this Silence Trap, I mean, people people who know what this is aren't going to just head straight into the room and get shot by this. Um, I'm not sure what you could do to change it. The only thing is, like, that Silence Trap being in that spot specifically, like, if you could move it down a little bit, maybe it would be better, just so people don't know what they're walking into right away. Alright, Mega Mutton with a Bad Dog and a Healing Puppeteer, I think that's good. Sometimes uh, I change it up a little bit, sometimes I throw in, like, a Defendatron with the, the, uh, what do you call it, Healing Puppeteer. I think that's fine though. And then Pete Poundmore with a healer. Um, the only problem is mm, I would like the healer if you could to have him maybe up here somewhere in this range because you have the Pete Poundmore and he's gonna be walking around this corner and the puppeteer is quite a bit slower and will spawn their skeletons and then walk around the corner. By that time you might have the Pete Poundmore die like they did here. Um, whereas if you have the puppeteer here he has vision of the Pete Poundmore the entire time. Alright, so either way, like, you had your archers spread out pretty well there, so I got hit by one of them regardless. The only thing that I would be saying here is you're using so many archers throughout your castle. Archers are really weak, to volley really weak, just in general, with their hit points. So I would be a little bit ca cautious of having your castle be too quick for certain people if they don't, like, die to archer DPS or something like that. This will also be a bit better once they nerf potions, because the more damage you can deal to a hero, the better you'll be doing. Um, and I'll probably be doing a complete remodification at patch 17. I'm really looking forward to that patch. This sort of vision thing, um, I think, like, first of all, I don't really like uh, smelly warriors to begin with, but then you have this vision where I can drop a volley and hit all of them at once, and you notice most of them didn't even get to a chance to try to swing at me. And then even afterwards, they're pretty easy to dodge. So you could put them, like, around this corner, but even then, I probably would be able to see them and volley them, although this trap would help out. You know, if this trap was down here more, maybe I'm a little bit closer. Um, maybe you can throw in like a jelly wall and put them, I don't know, somewhere out of vision. 
spread them out more. There's a couple things you could do, or you could just replace it to something a little bit different. Like, unless you're against using Scorpios, I think a Scorpio in this general area would be okay, because they're pulling you into the silence trap. And the vision isn't as important of a deal, because Scorpios are just so tanky in general. Alright, again with the archers, I think that's good. And there's a Scorpio. I think that was probably trying to put me on, yeah, a uh, springboard trap. That Scorpio went down quick. I guess he's probably only level 20. Um, obviously, leveling him up will probably level up your castle, but level 24 is a huge upgrade for Scorpios. Alright, then you have a Jimbo. I'm just going to throw down one of these and then try to headshot the Jimbo. Alright. Um, so I don't really like the smelly warriors combined with Jimbo here. I would almost prefer a Defenditron if you could like get rid of the Snotter, get rid of the Smelly Warrior, add a Defenditron to Jimbo. Um, back here, was this just a Smelly Archer? Then a Zeke right here maybe? Um, the Zeke I think is okay. The Smelly Archer is even okay, just make sure they're spread out so a volley doesn't kill them all. Um, the thing is if you have Zeke and Smelly Warrior, I'd prefer to take out the Jimbo and add something else that's more space control based. That forces the hero to not just kind of, like, I guess Jimbo is sort of space control space, but he doesn't take up that much space. It's like a circle around him that you don't want to get into. And you can kind of maneuver around Jimbo because he's kind of slow and he attacks slow and go after the archers. Whereas if you had maybe a Scorpio where they're constantly pulling away from the archers and that, like, little mini stun on the pull might force archer shots to hit. Um, maybe, probably not a Mega Mutton because you'd be able to just ignore the Mega Mutton itself. Um, what else could you throw in here? I don't know. I think it's okay. And then you have the Enrager Puppeteer, or you had the Healer Puppeteer, which is fine as well. Um, alternatively, I guess you could throw in a Defendatron on his AoE instead of Bodyguard on Jimbo, and maybe that would block, like, volleys and maybe block a couple shots on the Archers. Really, you just want to get the Archer DPS in there. Alright, and I ended up getting the loot as well. And this is basically because you have, I mean, I could have probably looted a ca your castle if I was trying really diff really hard anyway, because level 24 castles or level 23, they're probably not going to keep me out, but um, you know, as I was talking and I was standing around a little bit here and there, I was still able to loot it because of so many archers being in there. They're just so weak of units, they don't take much time to actually kill. So I would suggest switching a few of those out, unless you're getting quite a few kills from them, at least until patch 17, then maybe there'll be a lot more uses for that sort of thing. Um, but I, I would say leave a couple of them in there because they are pretty good. You can even do um, Zeke plus one Archer, or plus one Cyclops, I mean, on charge. And it adds a little bit more tankiness to it. And Zeke, in general, when he crits, does a little bit more damage as well. Um, but yeah, with that, we'll jump into number three. Yeah. Alright, and for number three, we have Shahiro123, cast level 23 also. Um, so we'll jump into it on my Archer. And again, not shielded, so hopefully we can get a little bit more gold for the challenge, 1 billion gold challenge. Alright, so a Scorpio here. I'm not sure exactly what what uh, the Puppeteer was on. And then also a, uh, what do you call it, Dampener, which I really like. Yeah, I think this one is pretty good. Um, let me just take a look at the trap placement really quickly here. Alright, so if I'm fighting it here, I'm not sure if there's any way that you can pull this back just a couple notches. Like, just put it as far up as you can. I know that like the, the limit is somewhere in here, somewhere in this range. If you can have it come up a little bit, because someone's going to be fighting, obviously, around this. You want to have these corners in range of it. But you don't really need this hallway in range of it. Nobody's going to stand here and fight this group, right? They're either going to cut it backwards to here, or they're going to stand here and just dodge. And as the Scorpio comes up, when he hits, he's going to knock you back to here in this general range. So you want to have this in range of this and in range of these corners. I hope that made sense. Other than that, I think it's good. Palmer. Okay, so it's on a heal, which is good.
All right, what do we have here? Defendatron Scorpio. Okay. Is that Defendatron on Bodyguard? It looks like yes. So I would say reverse those two. Um, reverse the Scorpio and the Defendatron's placement so that I can't just headshot the, the Defendatron from here. That will add a little bit more survivability to the Scorpio. Other than that, I think it's fine. It's a good... it's like extra time wasting, I guess. And then again, Bodyguard. I would say try to put your Jimbo in front of the Defendatron again, just to make it a little bit more difficult to headshot that guy down. You want to keep the Bodyguarded uh, creature in front, so I would say like... Jimbo here, Defendatron kind of here, and then you can have the bad dog down over here as well. <clears throat> Another Pete Palmer on a healer. The only problem with this one is that if the Pete Palmer starts going around the corner, then the... Well, not even that, but I'll explain a little bit how, how uh, puppeteers work in general. Again, I've kind of explained it a little bit, but basically, with your uh, with your puppeteer here, and you have your Pete Palmore here, your idea is the Pete Palmore starts to attack, and as he's getting hit, your heals are going off. The problem is, if a puppeteer doesn't have vision of the hero, it will come into vision of the hero in order to summon its two skeletons, and then go to whatever specializations it's on. So you have to have vision of the hero. So the only thing that you could do is put you know things back more around the corner, so that the hero comes around the corner fully, then gets aggroed, the puppeteer should then uh, summon its skeletons, and then the Pete Palmore should force the hero back around the corner. Pa Pete Palmore takes damage, and that should work as well. All right, so we had a dampener, a lot of uh, a lot of these. So that actually makes me think that. Um, that the castle goes down this way. Those snotters were most likely to make it so that I couldn't skip it. Um, so if you want this guy to flank around, I would say try to hide it a little bit better. I don't know if there's anything you can do. Maybe make it connect lower in the in that room. Um, and then he'll be flanking and push me into this group like he did here, but a little bit quicker. The problem I have with these is they just don't do quite enough damage for my liking. You know, 130, it's not that great. It's less than an archer, and they shoot slower than archers. The only good thing about them is they teleport around, so it's a little bit more annoying to th for knights to deal with. But for archers, I think they're pretty easy. Looks like that doesn't pull anything. That's kind of a good fake, and then you had that, which is good. Um, I'll take a look at it in a little bit more detail. Oh, that was weird. I didn't want that. Ow. Alright, I think I'm okay. That healer is actually, like, being annoying. Because I ran out of mana. Okay. So let's take a look at this a little bit more in detail. So I'm coming around here, I'm slowed, but then I shoot this guy, which is a fake. Which makes me stay here, so I'm not going to be slowed as I'm coming into the trap itself. The trap itself is decently set up. I mean, it's not amazing. It's not the best because it's not under the skill bar, obviously. Um, but it's still, you don't have vision of it until around here, I'd say. And people aren't going to notice that all the time. So probably here, which I think you're already aggroed for. And then I did a roll backwards. So because I wasn't like slowed or anything, and even then, if I have a good enough reaction time, I can get out of this. Um, but I think it's pretty good. And then it looks like you have another one here. So obviously this is, you know, connected between the two, which I think that's fine. I'm just hoping it doesn't go, like, too far. Like, three is about the maximum that I would like to have, just because I think after three, you can set it up so you have Stairmasters or something like that killing you after two. Um, so I don't think, I think, like, everything beyond this is overkill.
which you only have three. So, I mean, that's okay. I think you could even remove this trap itself and just add something that'll kill them here, or even, you know, more damage dealing units here, like archers. Um, but I think that's fine. No, I'm not going to get more gold for the challenge. Alright, that's fine. I might do a bunch of attacking episodes just as I'm trying to help out that challenge so we can get those corrosive, corrosive traps. Alright, so it looks like this or this is skippable. So, I don't really like that. That's, you know, a good portion of defense. 15 points that is completely skippable, or an entire group here. But you do have, looks like, 3 Scorpio boss room. I haven't seen the third unit yet. However, they're on the pinstrike, which I think is quite a bit weaker of a 3 Scorpio boss room. It's like the second weakest variation. I think punch truck would be the worst, and this would be the second worst. I guess you kind of have an effect where you could land on these traps again, which, you know, stuns you for a little bit longer. Alright. Oh, it was a Zeke, so I think that's actually better. I just accidentally killed the Zeke. I don't know if there's anything that you could do for that. Whereas if someone opens with a volley on the first two Scorpios, alternatively you can have one Scorpio up, one Scorpio behind, and then the Zeke behind even more. That way, the only thing that they're going to see if they're kind of in this general area is one Scorpio. Maybe put one off to the side and put Zeke kind of over here. I don't know, something like that, just so that you can only get one volley on the Scorpios. People will be less likely to volley the Scorpio if they can only hit one. They'll headshot it instead. And then that'll keep your Zeke alive and hopefully get a couple shots off. But not too bad. Um, so with that, that's number three. So we're going to end the video here. If you guys enjoy what I do, please subscribe and leave a like. If you want to be a part of Viewer Castles... So this is kind of changing. Um, I had someone comment the other day about having people uh, send me challenges in-game. Although, thinking about it, I think you have to be on someone's friend list to send a challenge. So there will be kind of an extra delay between them, you sending me a friend, friend request, me accepting it, and then you getting back to send me the challenge. That's a lot more work in general, but I guess I can open that up to someone who wants me to, wants to like, set the level of their castle. At, like, say this guy is level 23 castle. If you want me to run your castle as a level 20, 23 archer, you can set that up and my skills will be a little bit weaker and stuff like that, although I'll still have the same gear. So it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it does make a, make me a little bit weaker and a little bit more on your level. Um, this is even more of a big deal for you know lower level castles like 14, 15, where I don't have a lower, lower level character to run it on. If that's something that you want to do, um, I would say like let me know that. if I don't know, you can just add me and create a challenge and hopefully I'll see it. I don't know exactly where challenges pop up. Hopefully it tells me when I log in or something that I have pending challenges with someone because I have a huge friend list right now. Um, but I mean I'm still gonna leave it open for people who don't want to do that and just want me to run their castle and it'll be a little bit quicker if you wanna you know email me at Frenzy Castle Runs and leave a comment on my castle or leave a comment on uh, one of the videos. I'm gonna still leave that open for people. Um, so with that we're gonna end the video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.